iOS can show a search bar in our views using the searchable modifier. And we can bind a text string to it to filter our data as the user types. To see how it works in a simple way, we'll start nice and simple. We'll say there is a, an at state property here that will store the user's search text and it'll be empty by default. Then our body, I'll say there's a navigation view. And there will be some text showing what we're searching for right now. So I'll do searching for search text. I'll say it's searchable with a text bound to dollar search text as you types in the search box, put it in that string field. And then the prompt will be look for something with the navigation title of searching. Now it's really important you make sure you use searchable with something that has a navigation view. So iOS has a place to put the search bar. And when you go ahead and run this code example, you should see a search bar at the top of your view. Boom, right here is our prompt, look for something. And as you type, you'll see it appear down here as well. I'll do searching for meaning of life, for example, right? And it appears straight away. Now in practice, obviously the searchable modifier is best used with some kind of data filtering. Um, and the key here is to remember that it's binding the search box's text to dollar search text, meaning that it's at state. It will reinvoke our body property whenever that search box changes. So if you use somewhere in here, uh, a computed property, for example, the values, it'll go ahead and filter it for you automatically. For example, we might say, I want to have uh, all names uh, property up here. I use soup with an H and then Vina and then Melvin and then Stephanie. And I want to filter that in a list as I type. Now, normally I'd say something like, um, I want a nav view here with a list of all names, ID of backslash dot self, and then give me a name coming in, and then it'll do text name, for example. That works well for a simple list showing all the names, but I want this to filter in real time. So I add a second property down here called filtered names, just an array of string. And if our search text is empty, then easy, send back all our names. Otherwise, I'll do return all names, filter where $0 contains our search text. So send back all names in the array here, where a given name contains the type of text we searched for here. And now we can say use list filtered names. So it's computed. So whenever this text here, changes as I type into the search view, it'll trigger the at state, which will reload the body property, which will reread filtered names, which will redo the filter down here. And we're using a list now, so it'll behave slightly differently as you'll see in the UI. Um, the list takes up all the screen with the nav bar. There's no search bar. And what iOS does is it wants you to just pull down slightly to reveal the search bar. That's how it works, same way all the other iOS apps work here. Uh, now iOS doesn't require we make our list searchable, but it does help users a great deal. So I can now go ahead and type, let's do S, so you'll see Sue and Stephanie, and then U and just Sue. Now, uh, I should say, if you're gonna do this kind of approach, don't use contains, it's a great method, it's not the right one here. You want the much, much longer method name, which is localized case insensitive contains, some other string like that. And that will check the search text against each item in our names array, for any text matching, but without worrying about capital V or lowercase V or whatever, it'll find it no matter what. Um, so you can see we have a capital V in Vena, but a lowercase V in Melvin. And so I type in here a capital V, it'll now match them both, which is much more user-friendly.